Ah, 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 what's going on, y'all? Skull Island. So this builds off of the whole MonsterVerse concept. King Kong, Godzilla, all of that. Hopefully they don't just use the same creatures that they've been using in the past. I want to take a look at the, the cryptids that we run into, or, or the monsters, however you want to call it. The creatures, the monsters, the cryptids, and wildlife and fauna. Whatever word you want to use, I got them all. I'm a, I'm a thesaurus, no battle rap. Let's take a look and see if we can either potentially try to identify animals related to real life examples of real species. Just see what we can glean, you know? We're getting nerdy with it. That's what we do out here. We get nerdy with it. So, strap in, let's go. Okay, first creature of the show. We see a large, slender, pink tentacle thing reaching out of the water. And it looks like it's about to go knock out a man. Whew. Now, just based on the size and the characteristics of the tentacle, it seems to be more similar to that of a squid. Cellophod limbs and the suckers they bear are shaped in many distinctive ways and vary considerably between species. The one that we see here looks more like the tentacle of Ilex ilibursosis, commonly known as the northern shortfin squid. So yeah, anyway, point being, it looks like a, like a squid tentacle. As of right now, I'm thinking maybe a giant squid or a colossal squid. I know that it sounds like I said two different synonyms for the same animal there, but no, nah, it's actually two different species, the giant squid and the colossal squid. They're two different animals, two different species. And these tentacles are quite uh, dexterous. I think that's the word I want to use, dexterous. They're, they're able to maneuver around seems like they have spatial recognition they're able to be used almost like we use our arms or our limbs and it's not just floating around flapping them around you know what i mean those limbs have a purpose and, and they're using the they're using the limbs right now they're they're bodying man's out here it's a problem it's a problem for real so yeah i was thinking maybe this creature that they've run into might be a giant squid or a colossal squid but then we got a different type of tentacle that popped out the water and this one was much more similar to an octopus. Like perhaps a giant Pacific octopus tentacle that was purple. I know I'm being specific when I say giant specific, giant specific octopus. No, giant Pacific octopus. A specific giant Pacific octopus, you dig? Those tentacles are much more like it's a gorilla arm to a human arm. A lot more muscles are packed up in that, that tentacle, I would believe. I don't know if, if tentacles are made out of muscle, but I would be pretty confident in that. Yeah, this, uh, this tentacle was significantly different in terms of physical characteristics than the, the one that I thought was a squid, so... Maybe this was like a hybrid creature, uh, a mix of a giant or colossal squid with a very very big giant pacific octopus yeah so this giant octopus colossal squid monster kraken thing took down the boat and that's how we end episode one we got giant crabs up in the cut and it doesn't look as delicious as it sounds neither of our main characters noticed anything up until it was almost too late they sneak up through the sand and seem to be carnivorous i'm sherlock out here something interesting that i noticed is even when the crab's claws were able to get a hold of the, the boy's leg it didn't seem to break bone in fact he was able to eventually kick it off and just could do a lot of there and that's surprising to me because i would assume given the size of the crab this is a big crab it's it's much what's the biggest crab in existence i think it's uh some alaskan crab or something right a japanese spider crab which was 10 feet honestly that's a, probably about how big these crabs are but like the spider crabs pincers look very tiny and don't look like they, they pack a lot of power behind them the, the one that I'm seeing in the show, those look like, like lobster pincers almost, or lobster claws. Like, they could do some damage is what, I'm, what my point is, but it doesn't seem like the PSI is very great. It didn't break through bone. So, looks can sometimes be deceiving though, so maybe maybe it's realistic. But yeah, I thought, I thought that boy's that boy's leg was done i thought he was going full anderson silva and this beach is full of crabs like they're everywhere now it almost looks like they're hunting in a pack not hunting hunting isn't the right word i want to use here y'all ever seen a like a group of crocodiles and they all be chilling and then suddenly out of the blue 
some activity goes on to, to trigger off or set off one of the crocodiles and it starts going at it or it starts snapping and then suddenly all of them are awake that's what this almost reminds me of the crabs were all chilling and now that there's activity going on they're all agitated almost like a feeding frenzy or a hunting frenzy okay now we got it looks like some type of terrestrial isopod where it's almost like a pill bug but it's a big pill bug this one it rolled over and it towered over a fully grown man that's not the part i want to talk about though okay so in this context given the size of the creature i would actually go so far as to say it's about to eat the man the man is its prey and in order to captivate its prey and keep it there long enough so that the bug can get a snack in it has a very shiny belly and this reminds me of how anglerfish hunt in the deep sea where they use that light to almost hypnotize their prey into just being like "Ooh, what's going on this is shiny i like this as you can see the man was quite captivated by the shiny diamond like interior structure and he ducked out the way but that's a very good hunting technique to almost captivate or hypnotize your prey to lull them into like a hypnosis type state almost and then there's minimal resistance that's an easy meal don't have to put much work in you just gotta look pretty i know some y'all ladies can relate to that you know <laughs> and another factor that i noticed guns ain't doing nothing the guy is shooting at the bug and the bug does not care those bullets are either ricocheting right off or doing minimal damage which honestly reaffirms the fact that it's a bug a lot of bugs in general have exoskeletons and what that means is their skeleton or the hard parts of their body is actually on the outside part where we have skin and flesh they would have bone essentially if they were us right so that's the point of an exoskeleton that protects you from the outside it's like a plate of armor i also see two brightly colored birds one's green one's pink they very much resemble seagulls so maybe a tropical variation on this island of, of just regular tropical birds seabirds fun fact a lot of seabirds actually spend their whole lives not ever touching land other than to, to raise or like lay their eggs it's not a lot of seabirds there's one specific species i'm thinking of and i just don't know it off top but very interesting right their whole life just never on the ground or on just resting like that all right i think we're on the fourth animal now and this one was originally confused as to being a piece of algae and i can see why it's very well camouflaged into its surroundings the humans walking by thought it was algae which i'm sure was the purpose of its camouflage to avoid detection from predators or in this case random humans who stumble on a random island but nonetheless almost like a giant tortoise looks to be a herbivore didn't seem to be interested in eating the people at all and wandered on its way and now we have a giant wolf at least it looks like a wolf she howled to get its attention which makes me believe that it's some species of canis or that's like wolves dogs coyotes jackals that family of animals i just got a close-up look of the animal's snout and it almost seems more like a dog i just want to say bulldog but not quite but it does have that flattened snout you know the flattened snout of a bulldog makes me reevaluate because most wolf type creatures have longer snouts but uh, this was a very compressed or a compressed or compact snout more bulldog than anything else we ran into a crocodile probably the size of a large nile crocodile it's slightly different coloration shorter snout whoa so this crocodile creature over here actually stood up on its hind legs in order to tower over its its prey right imagine the crocodiles actually did that they actually got up and towered over you like a grizzly bear and also this croc looks like it's equally comfortable in water and on land and i know that sounds slightly awkward to say because crocodiles can live both in water and can come out onto the land but this this crocodile rather than swimming after its prey has chosen to gallop on the land after 
the prey that's like going along with the river currents. Real life crocodiles can go pretty fast on land too, but in short, like weird ass movements. They don't gallop. They don't chase after their prey like that. They they try to catch you with like quick slithery movements. Not slithery because they got legs, obviously, but you know what I mean? They like do a little scuttle. But they can't keep that up for a long distance. And now we got something that looks like a hedgehog combined with a cat. It's kind of bushy and furry. Very well camouflaged into the uh, foresty orange fern background that they have going on. I want to say like the spikes of a hedgehog, but it's, uh, these are ferns, like they're floppy and all of that. And the animal meowed, which is why I said cat. It almost is shaped like a cat. Imagine if hedgehogs actually use their spines as some type of camouflage, like they just laid down and it looked like grass or something. Do any mammals actually do that? I don't know. If you're on the comments, let me know. Do any animals or mammals specifically lay down and use their body parts as camouflage? lion's mane maybe i know they use the color pattern as camouflage like zebras but i don't know if any mammal uses their appendages as part of their camouflage about halfway through episode three we have run into a giant bird of prey and as soon as i saw it dive out the sky the first thing i thought of was the extinct hast's eagle now if you don't know about these creatures they're giant extinct eagles that used to actually hunt the moa which are like giant ostriches back in i think new zealand but yeah nonetheless they would even eat people like that's how massive these eagles were they were like ridiculous if it's that size a bird of prey like even right now actual eagles have been known to like dive bomb at toddlers and babies They'll go with goats in the, the Andes and stuff. Episode 4 has given us a glimpse of what I would call a dodo. And I'm saying that because it looks like a dodo. I paused it as soon as I saw the bird. So I don't know the behavior. I don't know the characteristics. Off first glance, this just looks like a dodo. And if you remember dodos from real life, like humans hunted them to extinction because they were that easy to kill. They just were stupid. They were dodos. Let's see what the behavior and all of that is. But as of right now, our first glimpse, I'm going to say we found dodos, extinct dodos. They've been living out in this island. Which, if they're really as stupid as everyone always said they were, I'm surprised they're living out here. There's so much predators. The humans are barely doing okay. Like in real life, dodos are the size of turkeys. This one's obviously bigger than a turkey. But still, the character said, like, we'll take this dumb bird. And it's it's facts. Like, dodos were big, dumb birds. Or turkey-sized dumb birds. And humans were so good at killing them because they were so stupid. And it was just, it was easy. The dog got the dodo. So that's how that ended. Which I guess the, the dog is domesticated by the girl. So the girl killed the dodo. Charlie has just fallen down a large tunnel, several meters at least I would say, and without even seeing the creature or anything like that, my first guess is that this is going to be some type of burrowing spider. There's the skeleton of a giant bug already, so I might be on the right track. But Charlie believes that he's in an ant farm, which makes sense, like ants also tunnel up and all of that, so... Ants is significantly less terrifying, I believe, in my opinion, than spiders, but ants also have that hive mind going on, so really, I don't know, you might have a better chance against the spiders, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds. That was wrong, it was an ant, so I thought spider, RB was incorrect, it was actually an ant, and from what I'm seeing, it looks to be a solitary hunting ant, even though it's in a, in a burrow, so interesting. Maybe the rest of the ants just haven't caught on, or maybe the burrow is just so vast that the uh, ant population can be so sparse. Uh, but nonetheless, it's, it's very unique to run across one ant, especially in a burrow. So there is a species of ant, it's called Myrmecia. 
I'm probably butchering the name, but Myrmecia ants actually are one of the most primitive groups of ants on Earth, exhibiting different in behavior from other ants. Workers are solitary hunters and do not lead others to food. So these ants actually don't work together in a group as most ant species do. I'm sure if you think of ants, you think of a, a group or a line of them going to your food or going through your kitchen or going through your picnic, whatever the case may be. But uh, these ants, not only in the show, but also in uh, the real life, the Myrmecia ant species, are actually solitary hunters. So the show actually isn't that far from reality if reality was giant ants. And now we have a quick cameo by something that resembles a Venus flytrap. But rather than hunt bugs, it hunts humans or in this island, probably mice or, or frogs. And there are actual plants that do that too. Venus flytraps are the ones that catch and close. But pitcher plants are more like trap doors where the animal will walk across the edge and then fall in. And from there, it's just too slippery for it to climb back out. And it essentially gets digested alive if it doesn't drown. Pretty brutal way to go. But uh, the plant over here, the carnivorous plant, is more similar to a Venus flytrap. Where it'll, it'll like close on you. Which is crazy, because they were at first just all captivated by the beauty of the flowers and stuff. So another great example of luring your prey into a sense of almost hypnosis or like lull to sleep almost okay now we have what's best been described as gremlins on a tree and i don't really have a red life comp for this one it's um almost similar to the skull crawlers from the actual monster vs franchise yeah, at first i thought it might be like some type of lemur like just lemurs hugging up on a tree but no, it, it honestly seems reptilian. Surprise, surprise. In the beginning scenes of episode 7, we have an actual skull crawler. So my uh, tree lemur thing was way off because I thought, I mean, not way off. I, I thought it was a skull crawler. And uh, that's still the best comp I can think of. But there's actual skull crawlers. So yeah, I don't have a comp for a skull crawler. Maybe like a monitor lizard though. They might have a lot of similar characteristics to skull crawlers, not only in terms of appearance, but also hunting strategy potentially. Behavior for sure. It's very it's a reptilian brain, right? It's it's very go go go. I need food. I need food. I need sleep. I need sleep. Like they don't think too much. Now we've run into what essentially are pack hunter chameleons. Chameleons because they can change their skin or the color of their skin i should say to match their surroundings or their emotions so in the case here uh when they were getting ready to fight against kong i'm not going to talk too much about the story i'm going to focus on the actual creatures here so when they were getting ready to fight kong they changed their skin from a greenish hue to more so a desert coloring to camouflage against the sand of the background that they're in. They were working together as a cohesive unit, almost like wolves. And I know Komodo dragons sometimes work together, not really together, I'm sure it's not, like I don't think a reptile's brain, I may be wrong on this, but I don't think a reptile's brain would be uh, evolved enough for it to essentially like work together as a team also just talking a little bit more about these lizards now not only is the morphology similar to a chameleon but they got the tongues too i don't know if you've ever seen a chameleon tongue but if you haven't pause this video and go google that stuff in action man that nature designed something crazy when they design chameleon tongues about halfway through the season finale which is episode 8. I want to do a quick little update on the, the sea monster. Or the kraken or whatever you want to call it, right? I was originally thinking maybe part like colossal or giant squid. Maybe part octopus. But now we actually see the full monster. Some things that I missed. It also has poison and electricity. So electricity actually does exist in the animal kingdom. Not only as a way to navigate, such as like sharks or certain species of sharks, but also as a weapon, like electric eels, for example, right? 
they actually use their electricity to stun their prey and it looks like this kraken monster has used electricity in a similar type of way not only does it have electricity it has poison as well uh, which is why I think his name is Mike. Mike is poisoned as a result of the zap. Anyway, looking at it, it seems to have the beak and head of an octopus. Tentacles like an octopus, but its body isn't like an octopus at all. It also has those random squid-like tentacles, but its body, again, isn't shaped like a squid either. It's its own monster. It also has lobster claws. <laughs> so, this guy got a little bit of everything going on. This is a build your own sea monster. I like the concept. So they've done a really good job designing the creature, taking a lot of different elements from other existing animals, whether it be colossal squid, giant Pacific octopus, uh, electric eels, lobsters, whatever the case. They've taken a bunch of different characteristics off different species of animals and combined it all together into this one crazy monster for Kong to face off on now in the season finale. And I'm with it all the way, let's go. All right, so I'm happy to announce we got a surprise appearance by what looks like a giant centipede. And there are actual giant centipedes, but they're not actually that giant. They're, they're pretty small in comparison to what's going on in this show right now. But with that being said, there were giant centipedes from way back that already have gone extinct they used to be around during the time of dinosaurs so fun fact there was so much oxygen in the atmosphere during the time of the dinosaurs or was it oxygen or carbon dioxide one of those two like some some level was so crazy up there in, in during the time of the dinosaurs that everything just grew massive all right and that's it all eight episodes i ran through that like a champ concluding remarks i like the show i like the show a lot uh, I'm happy that they didn't just stick with the same creature designs, but they were able to switch it up and add a couple new creatures. I haven't seen them in Kong or the Godzilla franchise yet. I like seeing how they incorporated real life animal characteristics into the uh, fantasy animals that they created for this show. Uh, just goes to show you, you can't get crazier than nature for real. Overall, I recommend it. Definitely had a cool time checking it out. And hopefully there's a season two. Until next time, y'all. Keep staying nerdy.